So now in this next flowchart and video, we're going to do a broad overview of what T cells do. Again, T cells are lymphocytes. They're white blood cells that are going to originally be the stem cells that originate in the bone marrow, but then go to and migrate to the thymus for further development and completion of their development. T cells are going to be part of the specific immune response. In other words, T cells are going to bind to a specific antigen in order to elicit a specific adaptive response. Keep that idea of specificity in your mind. T cells will display much of the same specificity that we saw in B cells, but in a little bit of a different form. So let's take a look at how T cells would generally do their job within adaptive immunity. So T cells are going to also have antigen receptors. So T cell antigen receptors are going to bind, but they're going to specifically only bind to bind only to fragments. This is the, the difference here. They only bind to fragments of what are considered displayed. So T cells are, are very, very specific in what they like to bind to and whom they like to bind to based off of the displaying of the fragment. So I'll, I'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more in just a second. So let's take a look. T cell antigen receptors bind only to fragments of displayed antigen on the surface of a host cell. So this is a bit of a different response as compared to the B cells, okay? Because we have a uh, sort of a, a relationship we have to focus on. This idea that a host cell, your own cell, is going to talk to a T cell in order to have this T cell antigen receptor bind to it. So we have to have a fragment and we have to have this idea of displaying. So in order to do this, what we're going to utilize is the following. A host cell, or HC, is going to say and display a fragment of an antigen on what is known as, they display on a structure that you have to recognize and remember, known as the major histocompatibility major histocompatibility complex. So of course, I'm not going to be writing that over and over. This is much more commonly abbreviated as simply the MHC. A host cell will have a fragment of an antigen within it, and it will display that fragment of that antigen, which was just a piece of the pathogen that was infecting the body, let's say. It's gonna display it on a molecule known as the MHC. So MHC molecules. MHC molecules are specifically, therefore, structures. They're specifically host proteins that all of our cells have. All host cells have, basically all of our cells, host proteins that are going to do a good job of displaying antigen. This is basically a red flag that is sort of thrown up by any cell that says, oh, this is kind of weird. I just, in, I just uh, you know, consume something that's not normal. I, I made it into an antigen fragment, and I'm going to just show this to the T cell that's going to float around, and hopefully he'll recognize it and figure out what to do with this weird antigen. This is basically a red light. This is a signal telling the rest, telling the T cells, hey, there's something weird here. Can you figure out what's going on? I'm not an immune cell. I can't deal with foreign pathogens. And that's exactly what a T cell is going to do. So let's take a look. How is a T cell going to do its job of recognition and therefore acting upon the recognition of some sort of antigen being displayed? This display idea is the difference right now that we have between a B cell and a T cell. So a T cell, it's, almost, it's important to understand that it also will contain an antigen receptor, much like B cells. And the antigen receptor within T cells, um, which is shown in figure 43.11, is very similar to the B cell antigen receptor in the fact that it has two different polypeptide chains. Okay, so it's not four this time, but just two different polypeptide chains. One will be known as an alpha chain and the other will be known as a beta chain. So those are the Greek letters, alpha and beta. And of course, they're going to be linked together via a very strong bond, same as the B cells, linked via a disulfide bridge. So that's a nice covalent, strong, equal, electronegatively positive or favorable bond. So linked via disulfide bridges. That's what the technical term of a disulfide bond is, bridges. Making sure that A and B, alpha and beta, are sticking together nicely on this antigen receptor. In addition, this is an antigen receptor, meaning that it's on the outside of the T cell, meaning that it must be bound to the membrane. 
So therefore, it will contain a transmembrane region as well, much like the B cell antigen receptor contained. So with this transmembrane region, what's the purpose? Just like the B cell, it's the anchoring. It anchors to the T cell plasma membrane. It allows that the antigen receptor to stay anchored very nicely to the plasma membrane of the T cell. In addition, you must have some sort of specific recognition that occurs at the antigen receptor of a T cell. That specificity is going to be inherent to the variable region. There's also going to be a variable region on T cell antigen receptors, and this will also be at the ends, at the tips of the chains that constitute the T cell antigen receptor. So there's variable region at the ends of chains. This is, the, this is where we're going to have the antigen binding site. Here's a difference between B and T cells. There's only one antigen binding site here, not two. Remember how a Y has two tips? Here we only have one tip, and that's going to mean a single antigen binding site. So that's a difference. Even though they both have antigen binding sites, B cells have two because of Y structure has a tip, two tips, and the, B, the T cell antigen receptor only has one tip, so one antigen binding site. And then the constant region, or the C region, will just be any part of the molecule that's not the variable region. So we'll just say that the C region is the rest of the molecule. So be sure to look at figure 43.11 to get a good visual understanding of the antigen receptor of the T cell and its structure. Okay, so back to this idea of displaying and recognizing. Host cell is going to find or have an antigen within it. It's going to display a fragment of that antigen. And the T cell, which is floating around, is going to say, hey, you're displaying something that's a foreign molecule. I should do something about this. Let's look at the actual steps that occur in order for that type of recognition to successfully happen. So in T cells, there's going to have to be a recognition of antigen protein. So the recognition of antigen, remember an antigen is just a part of the pathogen that has infected or is a disease causing agent, let's say, that can be utilized to recognize what it is, what we're dealing with in the body. So there's going to be have to be a recognition of the antigen protein um, by the T cell. And this is going to happen, this recognition happens when the pathogen so the antigen is just a part of the pathogen. When the pathogen um, either infects or, so when the pathogen either infects or uh, part of the pathogen, or part of pathogen is, and the good term I want to use here is phagocytosed. So some cells within your body are good at phagocytosis. And those will be some host cells, part of your immune system, or part of your general cell outline. They're going to be good at phagocytosing or eating different things. Let's say it phagocytosed and ate a pathogen. What's going to happen then in order for a T cell to recognize that a pathogen was just consumed by a cell and I have to do something about it? Well, what's going to happen within the phagocytosed, the phagocyt phagocytic cell here is the following. There are going to be cellular enzymes within the host cell. Cellular enzymes um, are going to basically cleave the antigen that was just consumed. Okay, So whatever the pathogen was, it's going to break down a little bit, then it's going to turn to an antigen. We're going to break down that antigen even more because the antigen is still too big to display. It's large molecules. Even though it's a small bit of the pathogen, it has to get even smaller. So we use our own cellular host enzymes um, and to cleave the antigen into smaller peptides. When you cleave an antigen into smaller peptides, again, why would we make them into smaller peptides? Well, originally it was a large protein type of molecule. Now it's a smaller peptide structure. We have thus created fragments, specifically antigen fragments. That's good because we, that's what we need to display. Notice over here, we have to display fragments of antigen, not just antigen. So we break down the antigen into smaller peptides. Okay, nice. Next. This is all happening within the host cell. Keep that in mind. Next, we're going to have these antigen fragments that are nicely cleaved and broken down, and we're going to have them bind to MHC, those displaying molecules, those molecules that are good at displaying fragments of antigen. So the antigen fragments bind to MHC molecules that are found within the cell. 
Every cell has the capability of making MHC molecules because every cell needs to have the capability of showing the immune cells that, hey, something is infecting us, we need to figure out what to do with it. MHC molecules are a great display tool that many cells have. So we're going to make sure we bind the antigen fragment, the thing we want to display, to the displaying tool known as an MHC molecule. And then what do we do? Well, right now we're within the cell. That's no good. T cell can't read what's happening within the cell. It can only read what's happening if it's on the surface of a host cell. Guess what we're going to do now? We're going to take this MHC molecule plus the antigen that's attached to the MHC molecule and we're going to move it to the cell surface because that's how a T cell can recognize things. It notices when things on the surface are weird. So we have this MHC antigen complex moved to the cell surface and this is going to basically be the idea of the displaying. We're going to display, there's going to be a display of that antigen fragment that we broke down, that we consumed by phagocytosis originally. We're going to display it on the surface. Key word is the surface. The T cell cannot figure out what's going on on the inside until there's something shown to it on the outside. So now this is all within the host cell. You have this surface display of the antigen fragment that was phagocytosed. Now, how do we sort of classify all of this in more simple terms? Because this happens every single time an infection happens or part of a pathogen is phagocytosed by a cell. There's a really nice way to summarize everything we just said. We will consider in adaptive immunity any host cell that is capable of doing what we just said here, this displaying, this breaking down, this phagocytosis, this antigen presentation, this is going to mean that the host cell is known as an antigen presenting cell. What a great name for something that does exactly what the name implies. APCs, that's the correct abbreviation here, are going to be those cells that present antigen to the rest of the immune cells. Because when you present antigen, this allows you as a host cell to talk to the immune arm of the systems of the body. Because now what you've done is upon antigen presentation on the surface of the cell, you're allowing other immune cells like T cells to finally recognize that there's danger because they can't recognize danger unless an antigen is presented nicely and in a nice little package on an MHC molecule on the outside surface of a cell. Be sure to look at figure 43.12 because this is a nice figure to show you the entire breakdown of an antigen, the displaying of an antigen on an MHC molecule within a host cell. The antigen presentation and recognition by T cells is summarized in figure 43.12. So be sure to look at that. So this is our basic overview of T cells. What we're going to now be shifting gears towards now is looking at the specific ways adaptive immunity characterizes itself and works in terms of pathogen defense.